Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the inspection of local errors. In the previous video, we have introduced the inspection of general condition. So the general condition is the first thing that we see a patient. We want to understand the general condition of the patient. So we see the general condition from their facial complexion, the colors, the luster, the posture and movements. On this video, we talk about the, the local body parts, local areas. In this session, we are going to talk about the inspection on the head, face, by sense organs, or extremities, external genitalia, urethra and anus, skin, index fingers in children under the age of three, and as well as we're going to talk about the tongues. The tongue, because the information there, we're going to use a separate chapter to talk about the tongue diagnosis. So firstly, head. The inspection of the head, the, the, the brain and marrow is stored inside the head. The reason why we search that the brain marrow, the brain and marrow, that's because the brain and marrow they link together. They link together. So in Chinese medicine, the brain and the marrow is come is transformed from both of them are transformed from the kidney atoms. So they are actually the same stuff in our theories. So from the inspection of the head, we can see the condition of the atoms, especially the, especially the kidney atoms, as well as from the hair. The hair is considered as the extension of the blood. So the inspection of the hair can it reflect the blood condition in the body. That's how we understand the clinical phenomena from our basic theory. The first is the, the size and the shape of the head. The size of the head is determined by the measuring of the head's circumference, a distance from the above the eyebrows to the tuberosity of the occipital bones. So that's how to measure the circumference. Oversize defined as the circumference greater than the mean growth. We have undersize. So the de definition is quite simple, but what we need to understand is what, how to analyze through the basic theory, how we understand these phenomena from our theory. We need to be careful that the slightly bigger or smaller, slightly bigger or smaller, with normal developments of intelligence. So have no pathological significance. So which means in this situation, slightly bigger or smaller without the intelligent problems, if intelligence problems is considered as normal. In order to have a standard of the oversize or undersize, or in other words, to talk about the macrocephaly or microcephaly, we need to understand what's the normal head circumference. So these are the general standards or the reference or the circumfer the head circumferences. 54 centimeters in neonates, 42 centimeters in six month old infants, 45 centimeters in one year old infants, 47 in two years old baby children, 48.5 centimeters in three years old infants, and the head it will be developing a about 1.5 centimeter increase after the age of four. 
these, as you can see, these references are actually in general, so it's not accurate. The reason is because we we have um, pediatrics, the study on pediatrics specifically in Chinese medicine and acupuncture as well. So these in diagnostics, we just give you a general introduction of what's what's normal and what's normal abnormal. If you you need to know or if you want to know the precise precise table of these has this index you should refer to the pediatrics no matter from the western medicine or chinese medicine they will be more accurate in the circumference from diagnostics because this is the star of your theories to the clinic so from here what we what's important here is you need to understand just in general what's normal what's abnormal and how we understand from the theories in terms of the abnormal situation so the first one the common abnormal size macrocephaly so this refers to the the head is bigger than normal especially this part so because on the on top of the head is bigger it looks like triangle the because this area still small is smaller so when you see the pa the, the patient it's similar to this shape so that's why it says like an in inverted triangle especially the patient the the, the infants with mental retardation which means the intelligence, the development have problems. So why the baby will have a bigger head? That's because there's something inside there. Inside the head, what's inside the head is the fluid retention. So how we understand this kind of problem is because of the brain, that's the, the development of the brain, something inside the, in the head, and the brain is related to the kidney essence. So that's associated with congenital kidney essence deficiency and fluid retention in the brain. Why, why these, are, these two are related to the kidney essence? That's because firstly, the brain is related to the kidney essence. The second is the fluid, fluid retention, the fluid metabolism. It's related to the kidney as well. That's why it's focused on the, the kidney atoms. And this kind of infants always have intelligence problem or the, the mental Asia. Micros Cephaly. Microcephaly refers to smaller head size. So here, even on this images, is the demonstration. The normal head size, smaller head size, and severe microcephaly. This problem also related to, also linked to the mental retardation, mental retardation or the intelligence. This is because also because the kidney essence, the reason why the kidney essence, no matter bigger or smaller, that's because the, the cranial, the cranial de male development, the cranial is a is the bone a kind of bone the bone is related to the kidney right from the five from the basic theories zhang fu theory the create the bones is related to the kidney so the male development of the bones is related to the kidney that's why in this situation you need to analyze 
from the kidney essence. These are more genetic problems. So patient born by this, so, so the treatment sometimes will be difficult, no matter from Chinese herbal medicine or acupuncture, as well as from Western, from Western medicine. We, we need to understand how to analyze from the theories for these phenomena or for these signs. The next one is k quadratum. This is a square or a square head described. How do you see is the, the top of the head is flat. So here is flat and on the sides of the forehead is protruding. So it looks like this shape, square head. And this is happens mostly happens in the genetic syphilis, sy syphilis and in Chinese medicine also because of the male development of the kinesomes. So the head is uh, because the head is the where the brain and marrow stores and the brain and marrow relate, is related to the kidney. So that's the male development of a kidney essence. As, as you can see from the diagnostic, especially from the inspection in local body parts, we aim to show you the clinical images so that when you see, whenever you see this kind of patient, you will know what happened there. And also we give you examples we give you examples how to analyze these phenomena through the basic theory. That's how we understand the cause of the diseases and we treating according to this cause. So such as the tapers quadratum, this kind of patient. Although in in our clinics. We don't really use acupuncture to treat this kind of problem. If a patient presents like this, we, we don't really use acupuncture to retreat. But if you have to, if there's no other choice, you have to, that's if the acupuncture is the only way you can treat due to the lack of the finance, finance or the medical assistance. The, all the medical supports, what can you do? You need to focus on the kidney essence. So you need to improve the kidney essence. How to improve the kidney essence? That's something we're going to study in the therapeutics. But firstly, when you see this kind of problem, you need to know that's the kidney essence, the abnormal kidney essence. So that's the purpose of the diagnostics. Firstly, you need to identify the clinical signs and then you need to understand the cause of these signs. The next one is fontanelle. Fontanelle refers to both anterior fontanelle and the posterior fontanelle. So the anterior fontanelle, the posterior fontanelle. The anterior fontanelle is going to close within 12 to 18 months after birth. The posterior fontanelle is will close and mostly will close two to four months after birth. So how to remember there is at the back of the head close earlier than the one anterior. That's also why you need to be careful whenever you see a patient, an infant, when you palpate the head, you need to be careful that keep, keep in mind that a baby within the, the age of one year old, there's a gap here. You need to be careful when you palpate because we are under this gap, that's the brain. 
So he, here we're going to talk about the succum of the of the nail and as well as the buckling of fountain nail. Normally the fountain nail is neither bulging nor sunken. So whenever you see a bulging, it can indicate the pathological conditions. However, if a, if the infant's crying, if especially for like severe crying, you can see slightly bulging, that's normal. That's why it says phys physiologically, baby may experience temporary bulging from the nail when they are crying. The bulging in the pathological condition, we when you see like this, this, this from the anterior fontanelle. It's diagnosed as excess syndrome in Chinese medicine. Contribute factors could be fire. Why the constitute why the, the factors is fire? That's because the heat the the heat can go to the the top of the head, right from the etiology, we said the the characteristic of the 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 heat, the heat can go outwards, and also the the heat can expand the the air inside. So it, you can imagine here, if there's a um, tube, a sealed tube. So that's a sealed tube, there's air inside, but now we increase the temperature in the tube. What do you feel in the wall of this tube? The, the, the pressure on the wall of this tube begins to increase, right? So the heat in the head, in the body, increase the pressure of the superficial skin. But remember here we said that's the fontanelle is not uh, the fontanelle does not close. That's why it's bulging or protruding from here. So that's the excess heat. In this situation, you also can think about a headache due to the heat. What kind of feeling the patient will feel? That's that's where the distending feeling coming from. The distending feeling, the, the headache due to the distending feeling is also from the fire. Apart from the fire, it also can be water retention. That's why it says the water fluid retention. The, they're the same water retention or water fluid, just the, the same, the, the same words, the water retention. So these are two possible cause of bulging from the nail. So you're going to see from the other signs as well, such as from the tongue of the, the baby or, or the stool of the baby to see, which is, is the, the bone disease, pathogenic fire, or water retention. For the treatments, we tend to think even if for water retention, you need to think about what's related to the water retention. That's the abnormal metabolism of the water, which is linked to the kidney and the spleen. So that's the how to analyze these some these symptoms. Sunken from the nail. That's what you see in reality. The sunken head. And the infants under the age of six months old may be maybe normal. Sometimes, sometimes this can from the signs here you can see that why is sometimes that's because the stuff inside the head is not enough, right? That's why the the bulging of the front nail is protruding. Is higher than the, the skull because excess like water flu uh, the fluids or the water retention in the head on the contrary the sunken equals less 
either less bran or less water. So this can reflect the deficiency. The deficiency of qi, blood and fluid. What can cause the deficiency of fluid, such as the vomiting or diarrhea? It also can be the deficiency of qi and blood, as well as the congenital acid qi. So anything related to the head is severe and related to the brain, you need to think about the asthms because these are related to the kidney asthms. The last one, the delayed closure of a fontanelle. This can happen in either the posterior or anterior. The delayed closure, so It can indicate the kidney as well. The reason is the fontanelle, the closure of the fontanelle. That's the bones, the skull. That's the bones. The development of the bones. The development of the bones is related to the kidney. That's from the innate congenital. The spleen and stomach that's for acquired. So for this kind of problem, these problem we can treat. How we treat them is going to focus on the kidney essence as well as the spleen and stomach. So the in innate and acquired essence, the essence aspects. We're going to focus on the innate, the congenital and acquired these two aspects. This condition is often accompanied by five flaccidities, the head and neck. This is also actually the one it means that the, the baby, the head always dropping. So they feel weak in the neck and the hand and feet, the muscle and chewing. The fine retardation is actually the delay of standing, the delay of walking, the delay of hair growth, and the, the truth and speaking. So these can reflect that the, the infant is weaker in the kidney essence. So for this problem, sometimes it's from genetic congenital something from the parents. In this situation, the parents might be in a weaker body constitution or they suffer from other problems or weaker body constitution, such as if they are, the parents are too young, like the, before the age of 20, then they have kids. Or the parents are too old, or such as if they have the kids in their 40s, 50s, then the kids, the infants, are more likely to have these problems. Although many children are still healthy, but they are more likely to have these problems. It's from the deficiency of innate kinesis. The movement of the head, this one is simple and the normal movement is voluntarily and then flexibly. So if they can't move their heads flexibly, you can consider it as the abnormal. The next one we're going to focus on the, is the hair. The description in this textbook is based on the Asian people. So that's why it described as dark hair. From here, we need to, you can consider the, the races such as the white, the black, and the colored. You've got different hair color, but what's the, what's the same is the shining, the lustres, and the dance of the hair. So from these two can indicate a abundance of kidney essence. The reason is because the hair is considered as the extension of the blood. So the 
problem from the hair is more likely to relate it to the blood abnorm abnormal. The blood is generated by the kidney, the essence, especially the kidney essence. So for the abnormal of the hair, we're going to focus on the blood and essence. So what kinds of abnormal hair? So here we give you some examples of abnormal changes. If the hair is dry and firm and yellow, insufficiency of blood. Why the hair is dry? That's because the blood cannot nourish the, the hair. The second is the sudden the sudden presence of small boat. So the sudden presence, so which means the the loss of the hair happens suddenly. Small boat. So it's not a whole head, but only part of the the head. This is considered as the blood deficiency. Why the wind? The blood deficiency generating the wind. So from this causes, these factors from the etiology. Why the wind? That's because the sudden onset. We go back to the characteristics of the wind. The sudden onset, the, the sudden onset is the other way to say it's the move, the moving. What's the moving? That's the losing hair. The hair from the head moving to, to, to fall. That's the moving, the process is moving, so that's the wind. But what causes the wind? That's from the internal pathogens, the internal five evils. A lot of deficiency most, mostly re related to the internal wind from the hair, because the hair is the extension of the blood. So for this sudden loss of the hair, we're going to focus on the blood deficiency. So we have a lot of abnormal changes here. You can just have a look and try to explain the etiology factors. Try to use the theories link with the the theory to the symptoms, such as premature gray hair, coupled with the lumbar soreness and tinnitus. The lumbar soreness, that's the lumbar area, the lower back, that's the mention of the kidney, so that can reflect the kidney essence. Tinnitus, that's the noise in the ear. The ear is the orifice of the kidney, of the kidney. So that's why when, whenever a patient presents with these symptoms, you can think about the kidney deficiency. Then, immature gray hair, that means the, the patient will have blood deficiency. That's because, because the, the blood is not enough to nourish the hair, that's why become gray. Why the patient will have blood deficiency? That's also from kidney deficiency. The kidney deficiency will call will result in the blood deficiency because the the axons, the relationship between the axons and the blood. The hair loss caused with itching skull. Why itching? It's because of the dryness. So these are some other some changes you can try to explain by yourself. Some of them because in diagnostics we actually mentioned a lot of symptoms, the clinical symptoms. Try to show you all different symptoms and all different causes. 
So you need to study from your textbooks. The close all the aspects that we did not discuss in the video doesn't mean they are not important. Because from the clinics, you can't choose patients. You can't choose what kind of patient you are going to see and what kind of patient presents what kind of symptoms. So you need to try to understand for these factors, link the phenomena to the etiology factors, as well as through the theory. So when you, when you see the factors, you're going to think about the theories and the causes. The inspection of the face. Firstly, we're going to see the, the appearance of the patient, such as the images in these two images, the, the ladies in these two images. As you can see, their face is slight, is edema, so it looks like swollen. These two are swollen, the face, but what's the difference between these two? That's from the other colors. So we're going to combine with the, the colors. This one, the one on the right side, is swollen and with redness. This patient also may experience with pain or hot sensation. The patient on the left side, as you can see, the, the color of the face is pale or white. So this, this is the, the water retention. These two, when you see from the appearance, they look like swollen, but one is from the inflammation, one is the other one is from the water retention. So from the ob observation of the face, you can see we, we need to focus on the appearance. The observation from the face, the appearance, we need to see the facial puffiness. The facial puffiness is actually another way to say the edema. It is an absence, so they don't have redness or warm sensation. If the patient presents with redness or warm sensation, similar to the previous slides, the picture on the right side, that's the other situation. Here we talk about the absence of redness and warm sensation. The facial skin becomes pretty. So when you press, it becomes a hole there. That's the edema on the face. The edema in the body, in acupuncture theories, we distinguish with, into two categories. One is yang edema, the other one is yin edema. Yang edema have the characteristic of sudden onset and begins with the, the eyelid and face, which means it starts with the eyelid and face and then goes to the body, the edema. The in edema occurs slowly, so it's a slow onset and involves in the limbs. The reason why we need to divide the symptoms into these two categories is because the, the causes of these two edemas are different. The young edema mostly caused by external wind affected the lung. The in edema mostly related to the spleen and kidney. Which means the treatments towards the young edema and in edema will be different. Especially for in edema. The patient can present with water retention due to the spleen and kidney. And in this situation, the patient also can present with palpitation. That's the, the water retention affects the heart. That's the, the heart and kidney yang deficiency. That's also slow onset. What's the common medical conditions in this situation? Is the heart problem, the patient with the heart problem, such as the heart failure, 
especially for chronic heart failure. That's the, in acupuncture theories, we see the patient as the heart and kidney yang deficiency. The patient may present with edema, palpitation, difficult breathing, and also the patient could not lie flat. That's because of the water retention. So these are so these two are very important. So you need to remember here this most of the time because we got the test test pool, but most of the time these two questions are in the test pool. Mumps. Mumps is a very common disease in especially in children. We got different names in of the mumps in acupuncture. But because because of the translation, there's only one translation in English. So we use monks, but we describe in the description here at the sec second paragraph. You will see this monks. Why is contagious? Conta this is contagious condition, often seems in children and cause external congestion of epidemic toxic warm. So this. That's one condition. This is actually two situation: the contagious condition and the subcurative peritonitis. These two are different. Also, from the Western medicine, these two are different. The first one can cause the epidemic disease can be can it is a contagious problem so it can happen from one person to the other person one child to the other child and this the second one is not contagious mostly have presents as a redness sore swollen and this is the signs of inflammation so the redness swollen hot sensation and sore are the typical signs of in inflammation especially for subputative inflammation this kind of inflammation so these two are different then mix them together the peritonitis subputative per peritonitis is not contagious and also from the Western medicine, you can see from the blood test for this problem, acute superiorative peritonitis. From the patient, the white blood cell will be high. The white blood cell count will be high. But for the contagious peritonitis, it's due to the virus infection. So the white cells count is not high. Okay, what's the symptoms of the mumps? The patient can present with hot, painful swelling on one or both cheeks. It actually start from at the bottom of the ear. So at the bottom of the ear, it starts to be swollen. So for this, we need to, especially in clinic, if you see this problem, you need to distinguish is due to the virus or due to the bacteria infection. Also, the reason why we need to distinguish these two is because the causes of these two are different. The first one is the epidemic toxic worm. The second one from the the purative par paratitis is due to heat, yangming heat. The reason why yangming heat is because of the redness, the soreness, the swollen, that's the, the heat or the fire in our etiology. And also the area at the bottom of the face, that's also yangming meridian. So these are the difference between these two and also for the contagious peritonitis or the due to the virus infection, 
we also need to be careful that especially for children for male children so for the boys if it happens in the in the boys we need to be careful that they need to be treated as need to be treated as soon as possible because in children it may cause infertilities in future so we need to be careful for this situation the initiative phase you see sometimes the inspection when we discuss from different areas initiated phase like this we actually have discussed the indications the critical signs of indicative erosion of qi and blood which means they got male malnutrition because the emaciated face if a patient presents as this the very deep eyes very skinny you see the heads there's no muscles only bones if a patient presents with this kind of face you can imagine although from this image we don't show you the we didn't show you the picture of the body but you can imagine that the body also becomes skinny so this is another picture that we image that we show you before from the body observation on this picture image we didn't show you the face but you can imagine this patient the face also will be emaciated so that's the inspection of the face but sometimes it also can indicate the body condition so how to describe this kind of face that's the extreme wasting of facial muscles around the cheekbones and sunken eyes and cheek so you see from these kinds of definition from this study you need to understand firstly you need to understand what's the how to describe this kind of expression or how to describe it here if if from your test that's from the explanation. I said, can you explain, use a few words to explain initiative phase? You, can't, you cannot draw me a picture and show you and, and tell me that this kind of picture is initiative phase. You need to use this description. It's really wasting all of facial muscles around the cheekbones and second eyes and cheeks so these you need to remember that's the only way you can show me that you understand and you remember this kind of image okay so from the from here you need to remember the the definition as well as the images also the the causes deviation of the eyes and the corner of the mouth so that's also the inspection from the face you can see this deviation the, the mouth is moving to one side the mouth moving to one side and also here there's no wrinkles the special move look outwards here's the wrinkles but on the left side of the patient there's no wrinkles so that's the devi deviation of the eyes and corner of the mouth what happened to this is the facial disorder the facial disorder as you find the series, it mostly happens in the the wind caused by the wind the reason is because this problem always happens also with a sudden onset so the, this patient may be stroke patient or Bell's palsy but in acupuncture theories we say the facial disorder the cause can be the the wind block the meridian on the face why it is the wind 
was because the, the sudden onset, because only the wind can have sudden onset, and also moving to one side, the, mo the movement. So that's why we think that's the deviation of the, the eyes and the mouth is the, the wind. There are also some of the other indications. So you can just have a, these unusual faces not common to see in our clinics. So you can just have a general idea or you just keep in mind. Whenever you see, you can reflect that there's some, there's some time that we have studied in the diagnostics. I think face, lion face, mouse-like, marked-like face. So here we show you some of the of a normal face. The first one, the first one is not panic face. The first one, this patient suffers from hyperthyroid. So you can see the protruding eyes. You can to study the observation, the inspection on the eyes. In the next video, you will see the abnormal of the eyes. But this, you also can see the abnormal face. This is the false smile face, the second one. The third one, when you see a patient presents with the, the redness here, especially these two areas, you need to be careful that the patient might have the heart problem, especially from the, the problems in the bicuspid vowels. The last one is the lion face. So this problem is also not common to see now because this problem is mostly happens in leprosy patients. So the, because the leprosy is not common to see now because of the, the contribution of the vaccine. So these are the sound of the abnormal images. These are all the information on the inspection of the face and head. After the, the lectures, you need to go back to your textbooks. As you can see, this, uh, there are many other descriptions in your textbooks. So you can revise from your textbook. And in the next video, we are going to talk about the inspection of the five sense organs. Thank you for your attention.